Hey guys, it's Alexander Williamson here with The Secret History, Living in Your Aquarium. So today we've got a really awesome topic to talk about. We're going to be talking about coloration in fish, and specifically we're going to be talking about albino or bright white uh, coloring as you probably think of it. And we're going to also be talking about leucistic coloring. And that is, uh, maybe you've had a pet corn snake, or maybe you've seen tiger barbs, or uh, various different uh, fish that have orange and yellow hues rather than, you know, maybe normally those colors would be black and uh, yellow, or black and white, or something like that, or black and silver, but the leucistic version would have like a dark orange, or a peach color, and then a, a soft yellow. Um, so that's a little different. Maybe they don't have the red eyes. And so we're going to get into that. And in the first part of the video, we're going to look at some live fish. We're going to look at my Crebenzis. I happen to just acquire some really high grade platinum uh, Crebenzis. And in the fish world, that means that it is a complete dominance of albinism or albino genes. And that's when you really see. Um, the, the red eyes, it's so clear, there's such a lack of pigment that the iris or the colored part of the eye of the fish, you see the blood vessels through it. So you'll see pink hues and things like that, but you won't see uh, any other colors in pigment. Now in fish, there's one other exception that I must, must state before we get into this, uh, even the, the quick version, and that is iridophores. So we also have iridophores present in fish, and iridophores are the little teeny chambers that are within the flesh and the scales of fish. And they are made up of guanine and guarine crystals. I have another video all about that in guppies particularly. But uh, they, in, 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 in their functionality, they reflect UV light, which many fish and many predators of fish actually see. And so sometimes you can get an albino fish that has the uh, the iridophores and then you'll see a shimmer. It's almost like a gasoline, like a blue or red or green. It can be all different colors, but it's a shimmer and it's because it's literally hitting a crystal shape that puts out a prism of light, like the Dark Side of the Moon album. So, um, you know, it comes in white light from the sky and spreads as a different color of light, a different wavelength. But that is not all we're going to talk about today. So if you want to hear just the rundown of what's albino, what's a platinum, what do they look like, and that'll be a general thing for all the fish. We'll also go into the leucistic, which is oftentimes called albino, or blue-eyed albino, because it's a co-dominant or incomplete dominance of traits. And we're going to talk about what that means on an actual uh, genetic level, in a Punnett square later. So if you're into the uh, nerdy, uh, I want to know all of it. I'll give you guys the meat and potatoes first, and then we're going to go with the peas and the broccoli and your vegetables, but you're going to get that dessert of knowledge too. So we'll bring in the rest later. I'll cover the basics first. <laughs> that was the long-winded intro. So let's jump in. Let's take a look in my tank, and we're going to look at tiger barbs. And we have some photos of melanistic tiger barbs, which means they are full of melanin. Melanin is what makes African-American skin darker. It's what makes uh, a lack of it is what makes uh, Norwegian people or Northern European people, for instance, have such fair skin. And it's uh, there, it's, it's an adaptation usually to absorb light and to allow the skin not to get burned. So the closer you are to the equator as a human um, ethnic group, the darker your skin generally is because you get more light. And so it's a genetic adaptation that has linked to the color of our skin. Now fish also have some of these genes and it may be that it's just not a good thing to link uh, a fish being all white, you know, having all that, or all black, it may stand out. And therefore, even if some of these genes may be dominant, and we'll talk about which ones are and which ones aren't in just a moment, uh, they can get eaten in the wild very quickly. Even with predators, crocodiles and alligators, they're very rare in the wild to be uh, truly albino or platinum. 
because they get eaten. They're very vis visible. You know, they reflect UV light because they're so white and reflective. So uh, we're about to hop in, look at my tank, but I want to ask a favor of you guys. If you guys have any uh, knowledge that's uh, classified, you know, if you guys are a breeder of a specific fish that you really enjoy, be it um, endlers or be it, I guess, shrimp even, or uh, catfish, corridoras, uh, plecos, and you know that, you know, a, an ancestress that is a blue-eyed albino, that's actually leucistic. That means that there is a co-dominance, that both the gene for color and the gene for albinoism are both present and they're competing, but the eye tissue is coded differently and you need both genes for the internal organs, connective tissue, uh, and keratin to be albino for it to have the pink eyes. So if you see the red eyes or lack thereof color in the eyes and you can see the blood in the eye, then you know that they're fully albino. And so we're gonna look at examples of all of this right now. Then you can turn it off if that's all you wanna know. And then the last five minutes or so, we're gonna go over the Punnett square, which was uh, worked on. So there was uh, in, in uh, various nunneries and uh, monk hideaways, habits, uh, there were religious folks all over Europe, specifically in the West, working on trying to figure out, they knew that you could select things. So they knew that you could take a, you know, a, a red cow and a black cow, and you could end up with kind of a calico colored cow. Or they knew um, you know, that you could select the biggest one and keep breeding with the biggest female that has the biggest males, and you could make bigger and bigger cows. They knew this for thousands and thousands of years, probably 10 or 15,000 years we've known it. And it's been written about all the way back into the Egyptian times. Uh, in China, they knew about it, and they understood the genetics of it, too, with goldfish, and later in Japan, with koi and midaka rice fish. So uh, it, it's been known about, but a man named Gregor Mendel finally put together all the work that had been done in, in uh, these uh, religious places where people basically prayed, studied, and worshipped, and they also did a lot of the science at the time because there just weren't that many universities. So oftentimes they would take on a pet project that uh, would help explain God's creations is how they saw it. So this guy, Gregor Mendel, an Austrian monk, was able to figure out using pea plants how to plan out if you have an albino mother and a leucistic uh, father, what kind of babies are they gonna have? Are you gonna have 25% albino and 75% leucistic? Are they all gonna be leucistic? And that depends on dominance and co-dominance. So we'll learn about all that at the end. You got a good preview right now. You know that it all exists, but I'll show you how it works out on this chart. And I'm gonna show you examples with the magic of editing right now. Ugh. All right, so there we are. And now we are looking at tiger barbs. So these tiger barbs, these are the wild ones. These are the ones you have probably seen before in captivity uh, and in your pet stores. A lot of times they've been bred so they have more orange and this orange here is a little more dominant. This book is from 1984, so they hadn't bred out the different types quite as well. But you can see here's just three different locales of tiger barbs, different collection points, basically. And here is a, a different kind, which is the leucistic uh, type of tiger barb. And that means that it has that yellow gene. You remember what I was saying about that? It doesn't have the red eyes. It has the yellow gene uh, that, that makes the black appear almost white here. So it's a lack of, it doesn't have the black gene at all. And you see it still has the orange that's visible in the finnage up here, but it's missing that. Now down here, this is more of a platinum fish. And in this species uh, of tiger barb, there is the option to have the leucistic and the platinum and the platinum can still exist without having red eyes now for instance in crebenzis it's a co-dominant trait and so therefore uh with platinum uh you'll you'll only get the red eyes so 
that is a true albino in in some species some species have two genes basically if you think of it um usually a uh, uh, an animal has if we look at this chart really quick um we're going to say that the a is albino l is leucistic or we could just call it albino super albino or 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 maybe the reverse of that however you want to think of it but if you have a, a baby this is one adult with their genes you know the parents each have uh, a chromosome X and Y and X and X for the female well they're gonna end up with a a a l l a l a and in that combination where the parents are only half albino all the babies except for 25 percent are gonna be just like the parents but this 25 percent is gonna be l l and they're going to have both slots taken up, and therefore, if it's a uh, complete dominance, you'll see that take up the pigment color, color, coloration. But if it's a co-dominance, you'll see that some of the tones will still exist from the wild. So we're seeing the orange, and we're seeing, which is a pigment color, obviously, and we're seeing uh, the eye does not have clear and so you're not seeing the red blood vessels. Uh, I'll show you on the live example of how this is different. When, when we have a co-dominant trait, that means that the A doesn't overpower the L on that chart, and if you have LL, um, then you have a true albino. You, there, there are ways to get that. And just different fish species have different ways. And like I said, if you breed special types of fish, Please put that down below if you know if it's complete or incomplete dominance and if you know if they're heterozygote or homozygote. And to find out what those terms mean, you're going to have to stick with us a little longer than just this explaining of the names. So this is melanistic and this is an incomplete dominance. Um, this could be codominance, but I'm guessing it's incomplete dominance in, in this fish here. Uh, the eye is actually black as well, and the eye tissue tends to be associated with the chromosomal thing rather than if it's just a natural color defect or, or default. So, so that's to say in the wild, maybe some of them just had broader and broader black stripes and they selected for that. You wouldn't necessarily end up with this and the eye turning that color usually. You would end up with maybe the eye being red or the eye being green another color just because eye tissue and internal tissue works different than external tissue for albinism or melanism so we've got the normal ones keep those in mind and i'm going to show you a good version of leucistic in just one second here so let's hop on over to my aquarium boop 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 i just don't want you to get motion sick as we turn around but here are a great example of leucistic tiger barbs so these tiger barbs they are just an awesome fish they're they're super healthy full albino fish oftentimes have health problems and and you'll end up with a lot of infections eyesight problems and so forth and so that's why oftentimes leucistic species are are the best way to go about things and while you'll see them in the stores that's why like with the corn snake as i was saying you'll see the yellowish corn snake um and so on now behind we can see a crebensis that is completely albino and by its color we're going to call it platinum but i just wanted to show you that difference there of the tiger barb instead of the black you see it's got the white lines and its eye, instead of being a, a true full albino, is blue. So if it has uh, an eye that is not red, it's not an, a true albino, or it's an incomplete albinism gene, uh, a co-dominant albinism gene. All right, so now if we hop over here and we look at the crebensis, these are crebensis pulchers, and you can see on the normal young ones, we're going to take the same age. I could use adults that are bright and colorful, but I wanted to use the same age. They have a solid black stripe, some iridescence behind the gills, some iridescence on the fins. See the blue on the bottom of the fins? And their eyes are golden with a silver ring and then some black and then also some, some more kind of gold or silver. You can see that iridescent color is red right now. 
and the fins are turning purple and blue, different colors underneath. So that is what they would normally look like, but when you get complete, uh, complete gene set of albino albino genes, not just uh, partially dom dominant albino, then you end up with this. And so you can literally see the blood vessels through the eye. Now some fish, like these ones, they have an eye that's reflective. So rather than just the iris, you're actually seeing in through the pupil and the iris reflects light uh, with a metallic sheen because it has a UV protective film on it. So in many other species, like if you looked at a cat or a dog or a human for that matter, you would oftentimes see uh, that they have the red eye on the colorful part of the eye. But here you can actually see there are some markings and there is still some iridescence. See that blue iridescence? And that's due to those guanine guarine crystals and the iridophores compared to, here's another Cribenzis that's not that way. Uh, this is a normal one. Uh, and you can see the colors. You can see a little bit of pink coming in on the belly, yellow around the eyes, and it's just, you know, a nice looking fish. Um, and so that's a normal one. If it were solid black, the eye was black, there was no silver around it, then that would be melanistic. So, I hope you guys get it. Leucistic is when they look like this. The yellow with the cream or orange with the cream or orange with white and their eyes generally aren't red. Then true albinos are going to be a softer white. They're going to have pink eyes. Now there's another variation of this which we'll look at in the genes in just a moment, but you can tune out if you don't care and just know that platinum means usually that it has a strong albino gene uh, and that it's gonna have the red eyes. If it's a blue-eyed platinum, then you will know that it has either an incomplete dominance or a codominance as a gene. In cribs specifically, they have codominance and because of that, their eyes are actually going to be pink. The albinism takes over the soft tissue in the body. You can see it in the lungs too, uh, or their gills, I should say. But the tissue that absorbs oxygen in their gills is going to be really red, just like if you cut open a fish. Um, and, and that oxygenated blood is also going to run red uh, in the eyes, in the belly, um, when you see them color up for spawning you'll see that they actually color up that way too. Now this one has a little bit of the iridophore coloring on the tail, and you can actually see the ocilii or the dots in that kind of slight yellow, but that's still iridophore. So don't let that fool you. Let the eye and other areas, like see that blood color, the pink color on the belly when it came up? Let that be your guide more so, because you don't see that on these leucistics. You only see it on the platinums or true full albinos um, with codominance. All right, guys, I don't have a black melanistic one, uh, crib right now, but uh, they do exist and they are possible. But if you want to know how you can breed these creatures with these combos, this is the next segment and the last segment. I hope you enjoyed it if you're just staying for this long, but uh, I will talk to you next time. And if you want to support the channel, feel free to leave a comment letting me know if you like this kind of segmented uh, short and long of it. Actually, right there is a melanistic Venezuela Corridora. That's a Corridora Aeneas or a bronze quarry that has black in it and it's all melanistic. That was That couldn't have been better timed. I seriously, wow, okay, because I only have one of them in the tank. The other ones are all bright orange, uh, orange and uh, orange and silver. So, lets you know, all the, also another one is, here we have a leucistic, uh, or platinum leucistic, uh, a beta. And so it has the blue eyes with the body. So you'll also see a lot of... Um, and yet out of the same litter, this is what the other ones look like. So we got a quarter of the babies having this. And that will help us figure out when we use a Punnett square, and this method from the, eight, uh, from the 19th century, we'll be able to figure out, so are betas leucistic, codominant, or are they incomplete dominant, or are they even albino at all? Is it just a color? So I'll, we'll, we'll get into that right 
now. Otherwise, uh, please like, subscribe, turn the little bell on if you want updates. If you don't, don't worry about it. Hopefully I can earn, earn it next time. All right, let's get into the next scene. All right, guys. We are back and we are checking out Punnett Square. So this is what Gregor Mendel uh, came up with in the 1840s. So basically sitting there, 1840s through the 1860s, he figured all this out. And, and we're going to look at these traits for the, uh, we're going to take a look at cribs right now. So if we had a leucistic crib, what that would really be is an incomplete dominance. And that's when you see, you would see yellow. Maybe you'd see a couple other colors. You might see some, some blue or some other colors other than the Arita for sparkling that we were talking about. And that would be incomplete. So I'll show you what that looks like. So here we're using a big A for albino and a little a for super albino, but it's recessive, okay? So, so basically there are two albino genes and if it only has the one that's dominant with the other one uh, that's not dominant, then you end up getting uh, the leucistic look. You get that color uh, with the yellow and you don't get the red eyes. To get the red eyes, you need the super or recessive albino twice. Now, with any given uh, creature that has two chromosome or uh, two gametes for its chromosome or rather a gender, you've got an X and a Y. So this is, so this represents mom, or this represents the dad and this represents mom. So dad got a gene from his mother and one from his father. Mo and mom got a gene from her mother and one from her father's uh, that was, see he had an X and a Y, so one from her father. And that happens to be his grandmother. So the mom has her dad's grandmother or her, her dad's mother or her grandmother's gene for X and then she has her mom's or I guess potentially it could be her mom's mother her gra um, grandmother's gene for X also so that's why this can go back several generations and get confusing but with each of these genes uh, they make a chromosome when they're together humans we have 26 and in fish I don't know how many each fish has. Different species have different amounts, but they all work on this same two trait uh, per chromosome, but oftentimes there's more more uh, variables than just this. So it can get more complicated, but we're gonna try to oversimplify it, and if you really wanna know how it really works, you can talk to me and we'll add in the third uh, Punnett square box um, to, to clear it all up. But let's just oversimplify it because this is all you need to know for breeding, specifically for cribs and other, other things. But what you'll need to find out is are they uh, incomplete dominant, dominant, co-dominant, or recessive? And which colors are associated with each of those traits? So co-dominant would mean that they have different gene, different... Uh, uh, different um, <laughs> different uh, expressions of their genes, uh, which would be their phenotype, the way it looks, but their genetic material looks looks different, or it could look the same and express something because the A would be dominant. So we use uppercase for dominant traits, lowercase for non-dominant. So basically, we're going to look at this as albino, super albino. So both parents are just leucistic here. Well, if you mix them, you get A and A. You get A and an A, little a. Or you get a little a and a big A. And you get, oh, actually, I did that wrong. You get a big A and a little a. And here, you get an A and an A, a little a. So only 25% or this corner here is going to ha be truly albino, which is the full albino. That means the eyes are red, like my cribs that you saw there. They're platinum. 
and they're not platinum blue eye, that's where we would add another uh, another different uh, extra gene, but we're not going to get into that right now uh, because it's not the case with these cribs. But sometimes you can have a platinum that has blue eyes and is just not the albino that is uh, in the eye and internal tissue. There's ocular albinism, which is in your eyeballs and soft tissue and connective tissue. That can affect your eyesight, and that's when you do see the red. That's when you can see the blood right through the iris uh, or through the pupil reflecting around. And then there is the incomplete version or um, non-ocular albinism uh, where it doesn't have re two recessive genes or two codominant genes either way. And so you get some of each trait. So now let's look at a normal color or a, 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 an albino uh, or leucistic, sorry, a leucistic, solid leucistic. But this time the leucistic is, you don't know for sure because these both look the same. So even though when, when you see the X and Y genes expressed as the same, that's a homozygote. Where it, whereas if they're different, that's hetero. Think of it as um, heterosexual is uh, you like male and female. Those are two different genders. Uh, homo means the same, or homogenized comes from the same thing. So two A's. So both of the gametes or both of the genes are the same. So when we plan this out, even though because it's dominant, the leucistic or the big A is going to show up you'll have a baby that looks just like this, say father, and this will be mother. Uh, and then you'll have another AA. So you'll have two that look just like uh, father. And then mother, here we'll get a, a big A and a little A, but that won't matter, right? And here we'll get a little A and a big A. The order doesn't matter uh, because it is recessive, and so the little A won't be expressed. So all these babies are going to look like their parents. But if we had all albino parents, or true, uh, they all had the true red eyes, and that platinum very nice white, then you could end up with, I mean, you'd, obviously you end up with all the babies being albino. So that's, that's an easy one. But what if we end up with this? We have a true platinum, and then we have a, another adult that is actually... Uh, leucistic. Well, then you end up with little a, big a, little a, little a, little a, big a, and then little a, little a. So 50% of those babies, instead of 25%, when you have this version, uh, will end up being that true albino the super albino where the eyes are albino and everything and just like up here this is where when you have the two a's they have that albino gene uh, when they have it twice that is when it is codominance so each of these genes are really similar but one of them has to decide something and oftentimes it's not dominant over something so in cribs this is why some of them have blue eyes even though they're platinum and that's going to be you know the rarest on par with true totally albino uh, mutations and the same is true of melanistic so you're either going to end up with a, a litter that is 75 percent like the parents and 25 percent of their recessive gene or you're going to end up using dual recessive parents that are homozygotes and you'll look up what, what gene is linked with that, and you'll have all homozygote babies. So you'll always know if you have fully, so say, say mel melanistic traits in this fish, it's not, but, or, or let's try a whole different thing. Uh, say we're gonna turn the fish purple. There's a random mutation of purple, and it's dominant. So purple, uh, purple's the big P, and all these, mutated purple, you're always going to have purple in there. Uh, but if it only had one of the mutations as purple and the other one was still A or I guess little A, 
Big A would be co-dominant. So you'd be albino and purple, which who knows what that, maybe that comes out as pink. Um, and that's codominance if, if you get spots of pink and spots of purple and spots of albino, but it is incomplete dominance if it mixes. So if you end up with a lavender or pink shade of fish because you had a random mutation or even the original, so let's say full color so or normal, we'll just go with an N like it says down here, so N normal Crebenzis coloring and the albino uh, or albino with a capital A. So if it is co-dominant, which they are, then you know that it's going to have a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and it's not going to, and it'll, uh, it'll also break down. So if you had two of these, it's also going to break down, um, similar here. So N A N N A A N N. So you'll get 50%. There's A A. There's uh, N N. 50% will look like the parents. 25% will be purple and 25 or normal. Sorry. 25% will be normal and 25% will be true albino uh, because of that, that co-dominance. But if they're incomplete dominance, what happens is this same expression is you get two that look like the parents and two that have maybe um, white skin but normal eyes. So 25% and 25%, even though their genes may be AN and NA, like it doesn't matter which order they're in, they're different expressions on different, different X or Y chromosomes, you're still going to have the phenotype or how it expresses itself visually uh, from the genotype. The genotype is all this information that we can't see. The phenotype is how it expresses itself. And when you have a dual dominance or co-dominance, that's when you're going to get a split of this and you'll get the blue eyes or normal eyes, as we say, with um, the albino body. And that's why you're not going to see an albino leucistic uh, with, with the red eyes, with, with both of those genes and the red eyes in, in this species, for instance. You have to have both little case A's to get that. So I hope that clears that up a little bit. So, I mean, basically you have the option of when you have any combination of using a leucistic or an albino fish um, and you don't have any normal fish, you're going to either have a 50-50 breakdown, a 75-25 breakdown, or a 100%. You know, both parents are homozygotes, that same, and they're the, they're the same combo as each other also, then you're, all the babies are going to be identical. And that's how you can breed true every time. Whereas you're going to have to wait another generation like this and use this AA, match it to another AA, and hope that you got a heterozygote version because the AA won't help pass on the little a ever. So here you've got one 25% that isn't going to help at all, another 25% that's fully albino. So if you see these splits, that's how you know. And like I said last time I'm going to say it, if it's incomplete dominance, you'll see a blending of the traits. If it's co-dominance, you'll see the eye color and the albino flesh, or you'll see spots of one color and stripes of one color and stripes of the normal color. And then if it's albino, you see fully albino. Uh, it has both genes that are albino, both the ocular albinism and the normal albinism. Then you get that full red eye, albino, super pale white, platinum skin. And if you want the platinum blue eyes, that's a little tricky, but basically you're having the platinum trait and you're having the normal trait being incomplete dominance in a very specific way. So I hope, I know this is confusing, but I, and it's the next level up if you've seen my other Punnett Square videos and you can Google Gregor Mendel's peas 
if you want to see how it works on a simpler level than this. But we got into codominance and dominance, uh, and this is just on the board, the melatonistic. That's for the all black, and it works exactly the same as the little a, little a um, in, in this equation. So only 25% of a heterozygote fam, uh, parent couple will have it. If they're homozygote melanistic, 100% will have it. And it just occurs from a random mutation at some point, but then it stays in the line. And lastly, uh, if it is dominant, it could be the craziest color ever. You know, in humans, it's actually the dominant trait to have six fingers if it happens. Uh, but does that help you in life? Do you end up breeding more frequently than everyone else? Or do you get eaten by competition? It doesn't always mean that that's going to become the dominant, in a statistical sense, color field in your tank or anything. Because usually, uh, even if it's dominant, if they're bright white, uh, and especially if they're albino and their eyes don't function quite right, there's no reflective property in the color of their eyes, uh, they go blind very easily because there's not that UV protection. And one, they can't see as well, and two, they stand out reflecting UV light and normal light, and all of a sudden they are a fishing lure to get eaten as a fry. So uh, that's why we don't see them, even if the trait's dominant. And the only way you can figure that out is by breeding them or by knowing this genetic material. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoy this split situation. If you want to uh, help the channel through these a uh, little bit of bumpy times right now, uh, you can always chip in on Patreon or do a one-time donation, even a buck through PayPal, and those links are in the description below, as are links to where I've gotten a lot of my fish and my fish breeding stuff, uh, if you need help finding any of that. And feel free to look through my old video collection for even more info on Punnett squares and genetics. Uh, look at guppies specifically uh, if you want to learn more. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Take care of your critters, the people around you, and of course yourself, or you can't do the other two. And I think if half of us did half of that, half the time, our world would be twice as good. So I'll talk to you later. Swim on. Goodbye.